Hey everybody, welcome to week two of 3D Basics. Today, we are going to hopefully kind of unlock some of the mysteries of Blender here. Um, we're going to cover some more or some modeling tools. Basically, anything that you can do in edit mode. So, last week, all we ever did, you probably didn't even, many of you didn't even realize we were only in object mode. But today we're going to talk about edit mode and editing your primitives to make them look exactly the way you want to. Um, so we'll talk about mo more modeling principles. We'll cover a couple of modifiers. I'll walk through a couple of examples of like ways that you can model things. Uh, we'll talk about using reference images and things like that. Um, so w it's going to be kind of a lot today and it'll move maybe a little bit quickly. Um, but after today, uh, hopefully you are, things should start to make a little bit more sense about how you can do anything in, in 3d and in blender. Um, so, uh, th this is kind of an exciting one for me. <laughs> can you tell I'm a dork. Uh, all right. Uh, so if you can follow along in blender. Um, remember that learning and getting better is, has a lot to do with practicing. So it's okay if the only time that you spend in Blender is like the hour that you're watching this and maybe a little bit, you rush through an assignment. It, that's okay. But if, if you really want to get good, you're going to want to like play around and mess around after you watch this. So here we go in Blender. And actually, before we really talk about um, the modeling stuff, I just want to cover a couple. Th so I got I got a couple of emails from people uh, over the past week. Thank you for emailing. Hopefully, you were pleased with my response time. Uh, but uh, I just want to address a couple things that came up in questions, which are, were all great questions. Um, the The main topic was uh, about using the keyboard shortcuts and things like that. My camera's a little bit off. Um, and my chair's a little low. <laughs> um, so anything that can be done with a mouse and keyboard can also be done with a menu somewhere in, in Blender. So like, for example, um, many of you may not have a 10 key or an extended keyboard with the, the number pad. And obviously, accessing orthographic views is a very important part of, of modeling. So by using, uh, you know, the one, three, and seven keys. Oh, I also just realized I didn't uh, start my uh, keyboard keystroke thing. Let's go. So one, three, and seven in Blender. One, three, and seven are uh, the orthographic views. Also, if you uh, do... If you hold down the control key and do one, three, and seven, it's the opposite. So it's this is rather than front, right, and top. So one is front, three is right, seven is top. If you hold down control, it's the inverse. So we have control one is back, control three is left, control seven is bottom. Um, so that's just that's a little a little tip there. Anyway. Um, if you don't have the number pad, there's a couple things you can do. Now I'm too far this way. So every, like I said, everything can be found in a menu. So view up here, view menu, we've got, uh, viewpoint. You can select these things here, top, bottom, front, back, right, left. Also, you can see that the keyboard shortcuts are, uh, illuminated here to the right. So top is number pad seven. So you can just go through here and click. I want to click like this. Um, also, I should say uh, the, there is an, another shortcut to do it without having to do that. If you have, if do you, if you do have a mouse and a keyboard, but not a number pad, if you hold down the alt key and click and drag your mouse, the, your middle mouse wheel, Click and drag your middle mouse wheel, hold down the Alt key. It'll snap to orthographic views as well. Um, so you, if you like drag your mouse up, click and drag middle mouse wheel, go up, it'll kind of rotate your orthographic view. So if I click and drag to the right here, it's going to flip to that 
right view back it's it's a little bit chunky so several ways to do it an additional way one more way and this actually goes for more than just uh the orthographic views but you can change your key bindings uh so if you go into the edit menu and then go down to preferences we have key map so you can uh, you can search for uh, you know orthographic and you know you can change these so you can change it from number pad five to like the actual like row of numbers on the top of your keyboard uh, so you can go to key binding and you like so you can type in like the function you can search the function that you want to change or you can change the search by key binding so here like you could do numpad uh, seven and here so we can see numpad seven is changing the view axis we control this down you know can change this to well you can change the uh, if you click here it's just press a key so you can change this to regular seven um, but obviously restore if you hit restore it'll put it back to normal anyway so several ways to do that okay let's talk about modeling in edit mode so along in the top left of our viewport here maybe you noticed it before but we if uh, we're in object mode right here so if you click on this there's a drop down there's there are several things in here edit mode sculpt mode vertex paint weight paint texture paint we actually will cover all of these in this course um, Object mode is kind of what it sounds like. Um, don't forget your keyboard shortcuts. G to move things around. Um, objects are kind of single things. Um, so like all of the polygons together of this cube make up a cube object. So like same thing. The camera is an object. The light is an object. Um, and we just... Oh, and you can select multiple things, obviously, in object mode. But let's say uh, we're not satisfied with just, like, the regular scaling, SZ, of primitives. And we actually want to make something a little bit more unique. So we want to edit this cube. And we can do that in edit mode. So you can either click the drop down here and select edit mode. Or probably more easy, you can hit the tab key. Tab is to get into edit mode. So tab toggles between object mode and edit mode. So look at the left here. When I hit tab to get into edit mode, uh, you can see that there are uh, several new tools that appear on the side here. Now, um, one kind of key thing to be aware of is when you go into edit mode, you are editing whichever object you have selected. So, for example, let me tab to get back into object mode. We can see I'm in object mode here. Um, if I shift A, shift A, add a new mesh, and I want to add a UV sphere in here as well. My sphere is selected in object mode. My sphere is sel selected with the little orange, highlighted in orange. And if I hit tab... I'm now editing the sphere. I can't edit the cube because I didn't have the cube selected in object mode. So if I wanted, if I was editing the cube here and I wanted, or sorry, if I was editing the sphere and then wanted to switch to editing the cube, I would hit tab to go back into object mode, select a different object. Now this one's got the, the yellow highlight around it. Tab to get into edit mode again. And now I can edit this cube. I'm going to delete the sphere. All right, let's talk about actual editing. So uh, we're in edit mode. Uh, there are th three things you can manipulate in edit mode. You can edit vertexes, you can edit edges, and you can edit faces. So a vertex is where uh, there's a point basically where where lines meet so you can see along the top we've got four vertexes one two three four when I select it it highlights in orange uh, we are in 
we are in vertex select mode here off the top. So when we're in edit mode, we can select vertexes. That's this button up here. We can also select edges. So this is edge select. So if I click this, now I, I'm able to click on lines here. You can see it actually kind of highlights it in orange. You can select multiple lines. I can hold down the shift key and select two lines or three lines or four lines. Or we can select faces with this one here. So I can select a whole face like this, select whole face. So vertex select, edge select, and face select. Keyboard shortcuts. N uh, the top row of numbers on your keyboard, one is for vertex select, two is for edge select, three is face, one, two, three. So like these three symbols up here also line up one, two, three, one, two, three. Also, I think this is maybe new in Blender 3.0, but your mouse actually has to be in the viewport. So like if my mouse is up here and I hit one, two, three, it's not doing anything. But if my mouse cursor is in the viewport, one, two, three, you can see it changing. Cool. So, okay, we can select these things, but now what? You can use the same transform tools that you did with objects. So uh, I've, I'm hitting one, whoops, sorry. I'm hitting one, to, to select vertexes, maybe I'll select this one right here. I've got my selection tool out, by the way. Uh, w is for your selection tool. And right now I have the select box open like this, so I can kind of click and drag and make a box around things. But I can uh, select this vertex and then use the same keyboard shortcuts, G, to grab and move. And you can grab a single vertex. If I select both of these, you know, I can G move them like this. I can also R, you know, rotate these two vertexes. Be careful. You can see that sometimes things get a little wonky here in edit mode. And I can also S to scale these two vertexes. Do, 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 do. Cool. Same thing with edges. So, uh, and, and I should say, I, I, I'm pretty sure I didn't say this before, but when you're transforming, um, if I have this vertex selected and I hit the G key and I'm moving right click will cancel the movement so if I go over here and say eh, I don't want that I can right click and it sort of undoes it undoes it before it's even done it or left click is apply so you can hold or tap G so my caps like on it is click to apply the transformation or G and then right click to not apply that transformation. All right, so same thing with edges. So I can select this edge. I can G, move an edge. I can R, rotate an edge. I can S, scale an edge. And you can do the same thing too with, with, the, uh, with your axes as well. So like if I have this edge selected and I want a G, but only move it on the Z axis, whoops, Z. I just tap the Z key, and now it'll only move up and down in the Z. Or S, I only want it to scale, this isn't a great example, in the X direction, <laughs> etc. Uh, all right. Tab to get back into object mode now. I actually, I do want to uh, add a new sphere in here. Shift A, I'm gonna add a UV sphere. So actually, so there's a difference between a UV sphere and an icosphere. An icosphere is made up of uh, triangles, three-sided polygons, whereas a um, UV sphere is made up of uh, four-sided polygons, and it kind of they come come to a point here at the center, whereas this is more like a your twenty-sided die. Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons players. Um, so the, e both have advantages and disadvantages. But anyway, um, I'm going to delete. Just want to show you the difference. I'm going to delete the icosphere. Let's look at uh, the sphere here for a second. And let's get tab into edit mode. So here, immediately, you're probably noticing I'm going to hit 1 for my vertex select. There's a lot more vertexes on a sphere than there are on a cube. On a cube, there's literally only eight, and this has, you know, a hundred more. 
so there are times where you want to be moving uh, multiple vertices at once or multiple edges or whatever. Um, so you could select multiples like this. Like let's say I wanted to have like make a bulge come out of this. You could select a few like this and you know G move it like this and then select another one and G move it a little bit further. But that's that's a little messy and not not very precise. So I'm gonna control Z undo undo undo. There is something called uh, up here, not this one. Sorry, proportional editing uh, and so what this does it's uh, uh, in other programs it's sometimes called soft selection but it allows you to g kind of also manipulate the surrounding area so if I wanted to have like a little bulge coming off of this sphere here I could select one point and turn on proportional editing like this uh, and so it's signaled in blue. If you hit this drop down, there's kind of different shapes that you can make. This is something that you just kind of have to experiment to understand what it's really doing. But smooth is fine. And now uh, if I want to move this out, I can go G, X, or G, Y maybe makes more sense, and start to move this. And you can see that it's pulling some of the other vertexes around it, even though they're not highlighted in orange or yellow. Um, you can also hopefully see that there's like a dark gray circle around that vertex that I selected. So this is the area of influence that the proportional editing has. So if I, it, if I scroll the middle mouse wheel, it's actually going to make that circle bigger. And now it's pulling more nearby vertexes along with it. So I can, I can make this really big and it'll pull even more. So it's like we're really starting to warp it. Or I can middle mouse wheel in the other direction and have it have less area of influence. So there, there are cases where you might find this useful. I'm going to left mouse click to apply that. And so rather than having to move all of these things individually, you know, uh, you can use proportional editing to kind of gradually make things move. So if, if I, and actually maybe I should grab, I'll grab a vertex that's right on the edge like this. So you can, I can change the shape of this. So you can have a linear uh, fall off, I guess is what you'd call it. So if I go G X here, you can see that it's pretty much in a straight line away from it. Right click to undo that. Random sometimes has a cool effect, GX. So you can see that it's kind of pulling in <laughs> nearby vertexes with random strength. Um, but, you know, smooth usually is kind of going to do what you want it to do here. The middle mouse wheel changes the area of influence around it. So that's proportional editing. Um, a lot of times... I have this off. So turn it on when you need it and turn it off when you don't need it. Because otherwise it'll start messing with other things that is maybe unintended. You may end up wanting to select a loop. So here, this is a good example on, on a sphere. Um, so let's say I want to take a ring around this sphere and scale that outwards. Uh, so I have hit three on my number pad, so I'm in face select mode. I'm still in edit mode of my sphere. I have one face selected here. If I alt click in uh, on a face, it's, it's going to attempt to do a loop selection in that direction. Uh, so if I'm alt clicking here, in the space next to the one I have selected, and it's going to go or travel around the sphere and select the whole sphere. So then, once I have that whole sphere selected, I can S, you know, scale it out like this and make a flying saucer or something like that. Control Z to undo. Um, or, you know, I could turn on soft selection and I could have it just be, I don't know, a, f a funky fruit or something like that. 
Whoa, what happens when I go this way? That's wild. <laughs> anyway, we're up. isn't it already starting to get kind of exciting? Right click to not apply that transform. Uh, all right, that's loop selection. And same thing applies with, with edges too. So if I go to for edge select, I have an edge selected here. I can hold down the Alt key and click and it'll have selected that whole circle, you know, and I can GZ move this up. Oh, but I have proportional editing on. So maybe I'll right click, turn off proportional editing, GZ, move that up or down or scale it out, scale it in. Hmm. Cool. All right, tab. Let's delete the sphere. Back to our cube over here. Uh, let's delete the camera, delete the light, because we don't really need those right now. Now, with a cube selected tab, back into edit mode. Let's talk about extruding. So over, let's look at our additional tools here. The first one we'll look at is extrude region. Um, extruding is something that you're going to end up doing quite a bit. Let's hit three for face select and select any one of our faces here. And you can see that when it, with my, so this is different from my selection tool. I have extrude selected. You can see that there's a little yellow plus button that now appears sticking out of this face. So what extrude does is it's gonna pull out new geometry straight out of that face. So if I click on this yellow thing here and drag it outwards, I'm creating a new set of faces here. Um, you have this uh, this uh, yellow or this white circle as well that you can kind of drag freeform. But if you click the, the yellow plus here, it's going to pull it straight out of that face. And so you can, here you can start to go wild. Extrude this way. Grab this one. Extrude this way. Grab this one. Extrude this way. Grab this one. Extrude this way. <laughs> Go, go back over here, grab this one, Pull, grab this little white circle and kind of drag it down like that. That's, that's, that would be based on your perspective. So now we started with a cube and it's turning into a uh, monster. <laughs> Oops. Uh, cool. So the keyboard shortcut for that is E. Um, so you don't even need to s select the extrusion tool. You know, we can go back to the selection tool with W and make sure you have three selected for face select. And you can click on any face and just hit the E key and extrude it out. And then G, you can adjust it a little bit if you need to. Then here, you do it again, click, and then E to extrude. It's coming out. Uh, and then again, I, before I left click to apply this extrusion, I can choose not to do it and right click, it'll send it back in, or left click to apply that extrude. Cool. Um, there is another kind of extrude. So if uh, if we, if you click and hold here, there are there are actually several different kinds of extrude. We've got um, extrude manifold, extrude along normals, extrude individual. Um, a couple of these are useful. I'll show you real quick. I'm gonna go tab. Back into object mode, I want to shift A. Let's add a sphere again. I shouldn't have gotten rid of that sphere. Sphere has sphere has lots of good examples. Tab to get into object mode. Sorry, tab, we're in edit mode now up here. Uh, if I select three faces here, and, and if I hit E extrude, so we've got multiple faces selected, it's going to do them all together. Kind of, I believe it's based on whichever... Based on whichever one's in the center, I guess. Um, so that's one, that's just the regular extrude. Let me select three other faces here. And let's change my extrude to extrude individual. Whoops. So you can see that rather than keeping them all together, extrude individual made three individual extrusions. Uh, and one other one I'll show you. Let me select these three here. Extrude along normals. 
So this one, rather than having keeping the the same size of those three faces that we pulled out, extrude along normals, kind of uh, projected them outwards a little bit. So the faces got a little larger as it got further away. So those are just kind of very subtle different types of extrusion. Um, I think the most useful is is the extrude individuals. So like you know, if you were returning this into a gear or something, you know, you could do something like that. Extrude individual. Cool. Tab. We're in object mode. Let's go back to our monstrosity here. Tab again. Edit mode. Now with this one selected. Let's go down the line here. Insert faces. Um, insert faces is what's the shortcut for this? I. Insert faces is going to kind of extrude along a face. So it's going to insert faces inside of it. So actually, let's take this one here. Uh, if I click in, so that a little yellow circle appears here. I can click this yellow circle. And you can see that it's like drawing in the edges. It's squeezing in the edges to create more faces here. So... Um, this is like how you could make a window. So now what I can do is I can go back to the regular extrude tool, extrude region, and actually go backwards like this. Now I've got a little window. <laughs> so the, the thing to note here, the, the extruding into it, is that like in, th in 3D, in like this type of 3D, the insides of things are always hollow. So you can actually kind of move your... Move your camera in here, and I'm looking at the inside of this object. I think you maybe heard me talk about this in the Zoom last week. That um, this is this is a big difference from people that have learned SolidWorks uh, or other kinds of like manufacturing design programs. That it's like you're building with solid pieces, whereas this is you're building something that's hollow. Um, so anyway, this that's the inside of our thing. So yeah, extrude inner is a cool thing. So I is the keyboard shortcut for that, or for insert faces. Sorry, not extrude inner. And then you could E, you know, suck it in like that. Just to, for some more interesting shapes here. So yeah, W is your regular selection tool. I to insert faces, E to extrude out like this. I insert faces, E to extrude out like that. Okay. I don't I don't think I actually really talked about rotating faces, but obviously you can rotate faces too. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure I covered that. Now, uh as things are getting a little more complicated here, um you want to be careful about clipping. That's kind of when when Parts of your mesh kind of intersect with other parts of your mesh. So you maybe notice that as I rotated this, it's possible for things to like go wrong here. Now, once once you get into edit mode, it's possible for things to get like janky, as some people say. It's so like things can get twisted, polygons can pass through each other, and that's less than ideal. See if we can see here that it's already starting to struggle a little bit with this. Control Z, undo, undo. Do so you want to try to keep things from intersecting too much. Obviously, you know, maybe it's part of your design that you're doing where things are kind of going through each other, but if it's not intentional, uh, you shouldn't be doing it. Uh, another thing, so let's, uh, let, I'll show, let's keep going here. The next one down the line is bevel. Hopefully you're uh, familiar with, with what a bevel is, different from a bezel. But the bevel tool basically kind of rounds edges. So with a face selected or or an edge, really, I can do I can hit two for edge select two, select an edge. Uh, the little yellow handle appears, and you can drag this up, I guess, up to create a bevel. And uh, just like when you were adding shapes before, anytime you use a tool, um, the this little menu pops up on the bottom. So by default, I believe bevel only does one segment, but you can up the segments here too. So keep an eye on where I just beveled as I turn up the segments, ding, 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 
So it's making it a little bit more rounded. Um, and you can change, you know, the sharpness or whatever, the profile type. You can change the angle of it like this. If you really want to get fancy, have it kind of go the opposite way, have it dip in. Uh, or just do the regular old thing. So that's edges, or sorry, that's bevel. Uh, if you have, if you're in face select mode, number or three along your keyboard, you can do bevel. Obviously, it'll do it all the way around the face. So you can change that distance and then change, you know, the number of bevels if you want. You can change the width here, you know, make it shallower, etc. That's bevel. You can also bevel uh, points. So actually, let me go tab to get back into object mode. Let's go back to the cube, tab again. I want one for vertex select. And if you have a vertex selected and you do bevel, it's actually going to, oh, sorry. Um, it didn't do anything at first, <laughs> but open up my bevel menu here and switch the effect from edges to vertices. And now I can, well, I think maybe I just have to type it in here. Vertices. Oh yeah, and I can change the width here. So you can basically split one vertex into four vertexes. Sometimes that's handy. Um, Because then maybe you want to extrude out of here like this. I don't know. So just be aware that you can you can uh, bevel single points or single vertexes. Oops. So we go three for face select. Keyboard shortcut is Control B for bevel. And actually, uh, I just looked it up. Keyboard shortcut for bevel vertex is Control Shift B. There we go. Zip. Next, uh, tab to get into edit mode or object mode. Let's select our cube again, tab here. Next tool, going down the line. So don't forget W gets you back to your regular selection tool. One, two, three are our vertex edge face select. Uh, next one, loop cut. This is, a, this is a super duper handy one. I use loop cuts all the time. Uh, loop cut, whoops, it's different from the knife. Loop cut is going to add a cut. It's going to attempt to find a loop <laughs> based on your current geometry. It's going to add a cut in the middle. Um, whoops. So you can see that as I hover over this with the, with the loop cut tool selected, as I hover over this kind of thing that's jutting out, you can see that this yellow kind of box appears. It's making a loop around uh, the our figure. Uh, and I can left click and apply a, a loop cut there. Uh, when I left click it, uh, it can, I can actually add up the number of cuts. It's going to spread them out evenly. So I can say four, five, six cuts and look and it's sort of, it's, Displacing them out evenly across the that area. This actually might make a little bit may a little easier to see if I just do a fresh cube here. So tab to get back in object mode. Shift A, add a new cube, G, move it over here, S, scale it up. Okay. Tab to get back in that, to edit mode. So we've got a uh, loop cut selected. Keyboard shortcut for loop cut is Control R. So we, we can even just do selection tool, control R, uh, we can click. And here actually, when you, when you do control R, uh, it allows you to kind of try to position it on your own a little bit. If you want, you can move it, slide it up or down with your mouse, uh, right click undoes the, the sliding of it. Um, but if I undo control R, left click to slide it and then I can left click again to position it like this. So if I want it to be up here, uh, here I can also up the number of cuts kind of based on that positioning. 
you can also have like smoothness the smoothness uh, will actually, it looks like it kind of makes it bulge out a little bit. That's, I wasn't really expecting it to do that. Inverse square root sharp linear. Anyway, um, so loop cut can do that, adding some geometry for you to work off of. Um, you know, whoops, what am I doing here? Three for face select. Select this, then you can extrude out of here. Control R, add a loop cut like this. So the nice thing about loop cuts is that it'll travel all the way around the shape. So now that we've extruded a little bit here, you can kind of see th kind of in x-ray here that uh, it'll create a loop all the way through, going <laughs> through this little corner and things like that. Cool. So that's loop cuts. Um, You'll, you'll find yourself doing a fair amount of loop cuts. And similar to a loop cut is the knife tool. Um, knife tool is not, for me, for my style, not necessarily as useful, or I, I wouldn't recommend it quite as much um, because it kind of can create a little bit uh, unhappy geometry. Uh, but how the knife cut, how the knife tool works is it's based on your perspective again. So, um, Maybe use an orthographic view if you're going to be using a knife cut or, you know, just be careful about your perspective here. Um, but uh, if, you hold, if you hold the knife off of your object, you can click once and it starts to draw a line. It draws this pink line. And you can click again anywhere, you know, maybe do it off like this. And it uh, creates... You can see that those those green. Let me let me undo undo. It made uh, there's two little green points kind of along edges that it crosses. That's places where it's going to create a new vertex. So if I left click here, those turn red, but it still hasn't done. It ha hasn't made the cut yet to like actually make a cut. Then you have to hit the space bar, and so now once I hit the space bar, it's actually made that cut. Let me go back to my W selection tool. And we can see that I have now two faces here. Um, now, here's, here's a little bit of uh, boring th uh, 3D modeling theory here. The reason why I caution using the knife tool, and sometimes using bevel actually does this tool too, but um, it can create n-gons. N, the letter N, dash G-O-N-S, N-Gons. And that basically means, in the 3D world, uh, a polygon that has more than four sides. Um, so, and, uh, well, how? No, no, I see, like, this is one, two, well, no. <laughs> Maybe it is easy to see. This one has one, two, three, four, five. And actually, this one up here now also has five. So if I hit, uh, whoops, if I go one for vertex select, I have a five-sided shape here because this has one, two, three, four, five, and this one now has one, two, three, four, five. Now, why is this a problem? So you can maybe already see here, based on my perspective, that um, our five-sided shape has these weird little ridges in it now. And so how... Uh, let me let me get out Microsoft Paint here. So forgive the the white. So, a polygon. A polygon. When your when your computer is calculating, uh, like if if you're playing a video game, and your computer is calculating how to create the shapes in the game. I'll create the 3D models. Everything is converted into triangles. So even with f a four-sided polygon, it still has to do this. So it cuts it in half like this. And then your computer graphics card, whatever, says, okay, here's a point, here's a point, here's a point, fill it in. Because a, a three-pointed shape is always going to be perfectly flat, no matter how you move them in 3D space. A three-sided shape is always perfectly flat. Um, so yes, e even like in here, uh, with our sphere, where is our sphere? 
even with our sphere. So it's it's taking all of these squares and just breaking them into two triangles. Um, even though they may be perfectly flat, that's just how that's how computers operate. Um, and so obviously, you know, a triangle is just a three-sided shape anyway. Um, so that's easy. But if if you have, let me get my my line tool out here. So if you have a five-sided shape like this one, or can I make one? Yeah, like this. Here we go. There's a, there's a pentagon, five-sided shape. Um, creating triangles becomes much more complicated. So now it's got to be like, uh, okay. And it only uses existing polygons, so it's got to go like this. It's got to say, okay, like this, and then another one like this. And so it's like, uh, okay. But, then, but maybe you wanted it to be like this. Maybe it makes more sense to have it like this. Maybe it makes more sense to do it, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, and then imagine uh, you did a bevel on one of these corners, and now you, you have, whoops, I need the pen tool. Now you have, like, a bunch of little sides like this, and then a long side, and another long side, another long side. And so now all of these are going to be teeny, tiny triangles. So that's why it's it's important to try it's it you may not always succeed i don't always succeed but it's important to try to not create n-gons a shape that has more than four sides because it it can just create a mess don't save <laughs> so we've we've created n-gons here so even like notice um with the bevel example if i go two for edge select and i select this one here and i go b whoops control b nope What's the what's the shortcut? Yeah, Control B. What is it? What was I doing? I must have I must hit the wrong key. You can see what key I pressed in the replay. If I bevel like this, make it four five segments. Now what I've done is I've created this polygon here has one two three four five. Well, actually, let me do edge select. One two three four five six seven eight nine sides. So like imagine all the triangles it's going to have to make to calculate this. Anyway, that's boring. Okay, we've covered the the tools. These these handful of tools here will get you where you need to be. Um, I want to show you one modifier to start here. So let's delete everything. Deleting the cube, deleting the cube, deleting the cube. Um, Shift A, let's add, oops, it, we're still in object mode. Yep, Shift A, add a cube. Now, modifiers. If you've done any other kind of creative program, um, like Photoshop, maybe you've done Photoshop or maybe you know Illustrator or something like that. But in Photoshop, there's, there's a way of doing things that's non-destructive. So if you have a picture, uh, you know, rather than taking the the pen tool or the brush tool and just like painting all over an image, you can create another layer or create an adjustment layer and do some things like that. But the original image is still there. That's kind of how modifiers work. So a modifier, uh, you add on to your object, but it doesn't necessarily change the actual geometry of the object. Um, so I'll give you an example. Actually, so I'll, I'm going to show you two modifiers. So th the, probably the t the most common modifier is, so here, modifiers tab is this uh, blue wrench. So before, previously, we've only ever looked at the object properties. This one here has a modifier property. So if we have the cube selected, you can click the blue wrench, and we have our modifiers tab. Uh, let me move my camera. If you hit the drop down add modifier, you can see that there are quite a few. You are more than welcome to play with them. They will not blow up your computer. Uh, the one we'll, we'll let's look at first is actually subdivision surface. Pshroom. Aha. So it, it crumpled up our cube. Um, but what a subdivision surface is, is it's dividing the surface, the surfaces of your object into smaller objects and kind of like rounding them out. It's subdividing the surfaces. It's a subdivision surface modifier. So you can see there's there's a couple of options here, but if you 
increase these number of subdivisions, uh, it's making cutting our cube into smaller and smaller, more rounded polygons. Uh, but remember, this is a modifier. It's non-destructive. So the cube actually is still just a cube underneath. So if I hit tab and go into object mode, you can see that our four or six sides are still just six regular sides. And I can move these vertices or three, move these faces. And it's still just a, a cube underneath. And I can delete this modifier and we're back to a cube. So that's the cool thing about modifiers. Um, but the one I wanna show you is the mirror modifier. So this is really handy if you are doing something that's symmetrical. And I'll, and I'll show you a quick example here shortly of, of modeling something symmetrical. Um, so let's add the mirror. Oh, so actually first, fo follow along with me. We've got a cube, just a regular cube. We're in edit mode. Let's control R. Add a loop cut right in the center here. So we're we're we we can even do. Hold on, actually, let me let me undo this. Undo, sorry. Let's make sure that we're in our, our front view here. So I'm I hit one on my number pad. I'm on I'm in front view. I want to be precise. Uh, control R, and let's do a cut right down the center. Um, if if it's sliding, we don't want it to slide. Right click, because we want it to be right in the center. All right. So we've made a cut dead center. Let's let's actually delete everything on the left. So I'm gonna go uh, three for my face select. Uh, I'm gonna select this one and hit the delete key, delete faces. You can actually, so by default, so if I'm looking like this and I wanna select all these faces, because I can't see the bottom one, it's not gonna select, oh, I guess it did. Anyway, so yeah, you can select multiple faces like this. Delete key, delete faces. Cool. So we've got a perfect half of a box. You can actually see that it's, it's we can see inside here. Let's add a modifier. Let's add under the generate column, mirror, mirror modifier. Aha. So the other half of our cube is back. And hopefully now you can kind of you can guess what this is going to do. If I go one for vertex select, if I grab this vertex on the right, oh, it's going to mirror it on the left. Yes. Right click. Same thing if I do 3 for face select and I select this one here and I e extrude, it's going to extrude on the left too. And so that's because um I'm mirroring on the X axis here. So you can actually change, change this. If you had cut it from the side, you can mirror, you can turn off the, the Y, the X and mirror it on the Y, things like that. Or if you cut it top to bottom and you want it to mirror vertically, you can change this axis to the, to the Z. You can have it do it on multiple axes too. You can have it on, do it on the X, Y, and Z. But because we cut it in the half along the Y, we will mirror in the X. Uh, one thing in the, with a the mirror modifier to be aware of, if I'm uh, in vertex select, this one in the center here, if I G, it kind of opens it up. If you check this clipping here, clipping, it'll keep the that point locked to the center so it, it won't separate or cross over. So actually, like if I had clipping turned off here, I could G move it across and then we're really going crazy. So if you enable clipping on the mirror modifier, it's going to keep that one steady. So this is super handy if you're doing something symmetrical. All right, so it's, it's been about 50 minutes. <laughs> I'm doing recording this in two parts. Uh, and now let's, let's do a very short 10-ish minutes uh, model together using these new modeling techniques. Um, and this may kind of impact how you uh, proceed with your assignment one. So uh, let's let's start with uh, a, a, a cube again. Start with a regular cube. 
Uh, I'm gonna scale Shift Z. Oops, and I, f I forgot to start my key, key and stroke program. Here we go. S for scale, Shift Z to kind of make it like this. We're we're gonna make a house. It'll just be like a square house like this. And actually, uh, S Z again like this. Just this will be like the foundation. Uh, and now let's let's edit. So this again, there's there are countless ways to model anything. This is just how my brain works. I I like to extrude and kind of make things as one piece. Maybe you have several different pieces as part of your house. Like maybe like the roof is a single part, and maybe the foundation is a single part. But um, it's kind of all about your personal style. For me, it makes sense to kind of have things grouped together, but it might not for you. Okay. I've got my foundation here. Um, I'm going to go tab to edit mode. I'm going to do th three for face select. And let's just hit the top one here. I'm going to do my insert faces, which keyboard shortcut is I. And I'm just going to draw it in a little bit. And then I'm going to E extrude. So this is going to be like the house. What you could do is. Um, maybe you have a reference image of a house or you like pull up, open up your browser and find a picture of a house and you're kind of, you can kind of go off of that a little bit if you want. Um, and, uh, let's, let's make a little bit of a roof here. So how can we do this? There's a couple ways. Um, what we could do is control R add a loop cut in the center here like this and right click. And then maybe I grab. I go hit one for vertex select, grab these two. So I'm holding on the shift here. Actually, I can just drag over both of these. Maybe I GZ, just kind of, whoops, GZ, slide them, slide them up like this. It can kind of be the roof of my house, maybe. I want the roof to have just like a little bit more uh, body. So I'm going to go three for face select, select these ones. We can extrude these uh, again. So why don't we actually do extrude along normals and see how this works. Oh, interesting. It's not exactly what I was expecting, but it kind of is doing what I want here. A little bit like that. Uh, one for vertex select. So I kind of, I want these, see how close these ones are here. I just want to grab this one and this one over here. So I'm holding on the shift key and selecting. Oh, they're so close together. Shift, get that one. And GZ, move that up a little bit. Okay, cool. GZ, a little bit more. Maybe I want it to like stick out the front a little bit more too. So maybe I maybe I go W for my selection tool, three for face select, grab these two in the front. I'm holding on the shift key and clicking both of those. I'll spin around to the back. G, or sorry, shift, click, click. Maybe I'll uh, E extrude again. But see, it's extruding straight up like this, so actually I should probably do extrude a region like this, and it should just pull them out. Oh, no, it's not doing that. Extrude along normals. Will that do it? There we go. Kind of did it a lot more than I wanted. There we go. Okay, so there's a house. Uh, now let's think about how we would get like a door in here. Um, so again, like it's it's a matter of uh, it's a matter of opinion. Actually, you know what? Maybe maybe I'll do I'll add some steps and then we can do a door. Um, so maybe I'll do like some front steps separately. So let me go uh, back into object mode. So one one key thing here: if I'm in edit mode in my cube here, let's call this house. This is an important thing to be aware of. Um, I'm in edit mode. If I shift A, add a cube, and it's kind of in there somewhere. If I add a cube, this cube is part of my house object because I added it when I was in edit mode. So like if I go tab to get back into object mode, the that cube and the house are part of the same house object. So if you're wanting to add separate objects, you need to make sure that you're in object mode when you're doing it. So I'm going to go uh, undo, control Z, control Z, control Z. Is this still in there? Yes, it is, control Z. All right, so the cube's gone. I'm gonna go tab to get back in object mode, shift A, add a cube like this. 
All right, and now I have house and cube as separate objects up here. So this one we'll call steps. I'm just double clicking on the on the name where it says cube up there and typing in steps. Uh, period key on my number pad. We'll kind of zoom in. And now let's make a, a couple of steps. So I'm going to go into object or tab again to edit mode like this. Uh, I'm just going to GY move it out like this. Maybe I'll make it a little shallower. I'll select the top one, GZ. Cool. And then uh, let's see, how can, I, how can I do this? I'm going to tab edit mode. I'm going to G kind of X move it out just a little bit so I can see a little better. How do, how do I want to do this? <laughs> uh, tab for edit mode. It's like this back one, E for extrude here. You know, you can make it about the same size. I'm gonna select this top one, E extrude like this. I'm gonna make it about the same size again. Then I'm gonna select both of these faces in the back. E extrude here. What's a good number of steps? Three. My steps maybe aren't very uh, proportional to this house, but that's fine. Then I can go tab back into Edit mode, or object mode, sorry. Let's do our side orthographic view. Actually, I, I did this a little bit backwards because this is actually my front orthographic view. We can just line the steps up with the house like that. Cool. If you wanted, you could even do Shift A, add a plane, uh, mesh plane. A plane is just like a flat thing and we can just scale it up like this. This could, you could call this, you know, the grass or ground even, V-R-O-U-N-D. Okay, uh, let's let's work on a little door here. How do we make a door? Probably, uh, whoops, tab to get into edit mode. Let's uh, let's control R. Let's add a loop cut. Hmm, tricky. Hmm, how about this? So when when I'm doing my loop cut here, you can see that it's like making an angle through. It's kind of trying to find the center of our of our house. So maybe what would have been a better idea is if I had extruded the roof as a, as a separate part. If you really wanted to, you could go back and, and do that again. Uh, but let's do let's actually do a, a knife cut just because we're we're not too concerned about kind of the final product here. We're just trying to practice. Um, so why don't I get out the knife tool like this? I'm going to go three for my side view, and I'm going to just try to click and drag a straight line across here like this. Pretty straight. So you can use the grid lines to kind of help you. Uh, sorry, not click and drag. If you click once and then move your mouse, single click, uh, you can see those green little boxes are where it's going to uh, add vertexes. Click again, it turns red, and then spacebar applies that cut. So you can see it's only done it on the front. Let's just grab this face here, three for face select. And uh, you know we can extrude, insert faces like this with the I key. Uh, you can see that it kind of squishes it from the edges. Uh, and then we can actually even just like G, Y, move this over here, scale it down, G, Z, kind of get it into place like this. S to scale it up. And then maybe we uh, insert faces again. I, whoops. I insert faces. You can see that it like, it kind of, it doesn't do it very nicely because it's, it's trying to do it proportionally from all the sides. But if you just kind of get it started like this, then you can uh, S, Z, scale it down in the Z direction to kind of get a uniform size. And then you can grab maybe like these four faces right around here. I'm going to hold the down the shift key and grab these four. Maybe you can extrude these out like this a little bit. I don't know. Just kind of to make a little door frame. And, you know, then add a cylinder. So like I can choose to add, add a cylinder to be like a doorknob or just add a sphere. So with the house selected and I'm still in edit mode, remember I can add a, a UV sphere like this and it would just still be part of the house. Scale it down. GY. Whoops, Y. 
<laughs> you know, this is this is a little silly. I'm doing it quickly. One for my orthographic view, and I can just position it right right on the door there. Cool. All right, there's a door. So you could do the you could do something similar with windows. Again, like we're not we're not really trying to be that efficient or precise here. So like you could just willy nilly grab the knife tool like this and go like, cut, 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 cut back to the beginning there. Space bar. And look, there's there's a new uh, W for face select. Here's another window. <laughs> you know, you could I insert faces like this. you know, SZ, and then you could E extrude and look, there's a window. <laughs> so that's just, we're just kind of starting playing with, with making things here. Like, you know, like you could, you could make a, a, te a mailbox or something like that or more windows. So if, if you are, you going this route for your assignment one, the 10 primitives is less important. Um, Cause obviously I, there's more than enough detail uh, but I only have three three objects. So, you know, uh, if there's 10 elements, I'll say. So, like, a door is an element. The roof is an element. Uh, you know, the steps, the window. If you add a mailbox, if you add a couple other things, a bush, a tree. Um, those, those count as things. So, you can choose to kind of start doing something like this for your uh, assignment one. Anywho, um, so that's it for this. Next week, January 27th, before we Zoom, we will Zoom. I want you to upload to D2L your progress on assignment two. So uh, just whatever you've got. You may be totally done. You may be just started. So we're just going to look at it together uh, next week. We'll also do a little bit of show and tell if you have seen anything cool in the, over the last couple of weeks related to 3D and you want to just show it to us. That's another fun thing that I like to do. Um, but otherwise, uh, please email me if you have questions and, uh, we'll see you next week. So long.